just in Gaza and West Bank, but all around the world. And it is in the name of truth. And the condition of truth is to allow suffering to speak. In the name of justice. And justice is what love looks like in public. Yes, it's indeed true that Brother Martin Luther King Jr. would have been 95 years old on Monday. And he, like myself, comes from a tradition of a great black people who have been hated and terrorized and traumatized for 400 years but we still here fighting. We still here swinging. So I'm here to let my precious Palestinian brothers and sisters and siblings know that when I think of where I come from, for every generation, we have love warriors who are willing to live and who are willing to die. Martin Luther King Jr. said, I'd rather be dead and afraid. I'd rather be a corpse than a coward. We need courage. We need love and freedom and freedom in love. Don't let anybody lie on you and say that we here in the name of hatred. We don't hate anybody. We love Palestinians. We love oppressed people no matter where they are, any corner of the globe. They could be on the chocolate side of Washington, D.C. They could be Dalits in India. They could be landless peasants in Brazil. They could be indigenous peoples. They can be Iranians. They can be Iraqis. Anybody. This is a human thing we're here for. So when you hear all the lies that hide and conceal the crimes, remember what Brother Martin used to say, no lie can live forever. Truth crush the earth shall rise again. I see it in your faces. I see it in your eyes. I see it in your hearts. I see it in your bodies. And oh, I wish you can see how beautiful you look. Isn't that the truth, my brother? Oh, yes. Beautiful you look. All the different colors and genders and cultures and sexual orientation, the national identities. Why? Because you hear the name of truth and justice, and we are going to raise our voices, put our bodies on the line, and yes, even go to jail and even die. Oh, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. December 17, 1951, there was a great black brother named Paul Robeson. Y'all know who Paul Robeson was. Give it up for Paul Robeson. He went to the United Nations with a petition that said, we charge genocide. He was talking about black people in the American empire. And it is consistent to be in solidarity with South Africa where we don't have to charge genocide. We see it with our very eyes. Day in and day out. Those precious babies, the precious men, the precious women. What kind of world are we living in? America, what kind of country? What kind of empire? All of that barbarity, all of that bestiality. And we still have to march in Washington before the Capitol and the White House. My God. Amazing to me. When I think of Biden and Harris and Austin and Blinken and Sullivan and Kirby. I can mention all the names. And I don't speak in a spirit of hatred. I speak 
in a spirit of love for oppressed folk, which leads me to hate domination, occupation, subjugation, degradation, any form that loses sight of the humanity of people. And I say personally to Biden and company, you're not just enabling, you're not just facilitating, you're not just coagulating and cooperating with vicious crime of genocide. That makes you war criminals yourself. You ought to be shamed. Who do you think we are? You think that you can suppress the love that we have for our Palestinian brothers and sisters? No, you got the wrong people. And I would say the same thing if they were Jewish brothers and sisters. The same thing if they were Haitian brothers and sisters. Same thing if they were Ethiopian brothers and sisters. Don't get it twisted. We're trying to have some space of morality and spirituality in a moment of overwhelming barbarity. And I can hear the voices of Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass. I can hear the voices of Claudia Jones. I can hear the voices of W.B. Du Bois. I can hear the voices of John Coltrane's Love Supreme. I can hear the voices of Curtis Mayfield. I can hear the voices of Gil Scott Heron. They not just isolated names. They are forces in history that constitute our souls so that we can straighten our backs up. And Brother Martin used to say, anytime everyday people straighten their backs up, they're going somewhere because folk can't ride your back unless it's bent. Our backs are straight. Our backs are ready. We are fortified. We ready to fight. We ready to resist with resilience. And when they tell us that the claims of our South African brothers and sisters are meritless, See, they've said the names a number of times, so you know they got talking points. Meritless. Have you seen Gaza? Have you seen West Bank? Not just after August 7th. Did you see it in 1948? Did you see it in 1967? Did you see it in 2008? Did you see it in 2014? And you're still looking, and all you can say is meritless, fine, how cold-hearted and mean-spirited can you be? <laughs> Got the nerve to go down to a black church where black people were crushed by some sick white supremacist brother. And then you you know you enabling blowing up mosques in Gaza, blowing up churches in Gaza, blowing up places where Jesus himself was born. I'm a Christian. I'm a revolutionary Christian. I come out of the household of Irene and Clifton. I come out of Shiloh Baptist Church. I'm influenced by the Black Panther Party. Don't tell me. Don't tell me that you can see what I see and call it meritless. We'll never put up with that. We'll never accommodate ourselves to that. And that's why we call it for more than a ceasefire. We want an end to the siege. We want an end to the occupation. We want Palestinians to live a life of dignity. One last point. One last point. Because we're getting ready to march. Oh, yeah. But when I talk about free Palestine, and one of these days is going to happen, I may not live to see it for myself, 
but I know I would have done all that I could to bear witness with every bone in my body. But I want that free Palestine to be a place where we're able to bring together human beings in such a way that, yes, we would be concerned about Jewish safety and security. Nobody's calling for the annihilation of Jewish brothers and sisters, but you'll never have Jewish security. You'll never have Jewish safety if you don't have Palestinian security, if you don't have Palestinian safety. That's what we're talking about. We want equality. We want equality. We want equality.